Hey, everyone. Uh, normally, I guess you'd be hearing from me talking about OS query or security or any number of things. I gave Matt, I think, six or seven, I don't know, maybe 15 different quick talks to do. And it was going to be a fun, you know, half hour with a whole bunch of quick talks. But he only gave me time for one. So I figured I'd go with the fun one, or at least the the one that I'm is most fun to me right now. Um, this one doesn't really have much to do with work, but it does have a lot to do with working from home. So working from home, um, you end up listening to a lot of music that can help you through the day. Um, but I found that I was listening to a lot of the same music over again. Like my, I've been automating things with my um, iTunes and now Apple Music Library, but it was just kind of getting stale. So I was looking for ways that I could, you know, mix it up, maybe get some new things in, or just, you know, do things a little bit differently. Um, I've looked at internet radio, and generally the sound quality is pretty poor. Um, there are some interesting terrestrial radio stations, but generally their streaming quality is poor, and just even more repetitive than the playlists that you've been listening to or the commercials. So I was looking to do something maybe a little bit different. So you could automate things in your um, iTunes and Apple Music Library for a long time through Automator, uh, but this couldn't really reach out to your app to the Apple Music catalog. It was all for things that was in that were in your library already. And I was poking around, and I saw that Apple had this um, Apple Music API, which is a web API, um, where you could manage items in a uh, in a library playlist. And I thought that this was really interesting. Like, what if I could go out and um, get a list of songs that from you know any different number of sources, and have playlists in my library that were managed automatically uh, based on different rule sets? Um, so I, I was looking at the at this API. It's pretty cool, um, and it was actually fairly well documented. Um, for an Apple API anyways. And there's even a Python client for the Apple Music API, which someone posted on GitHub a couple years ago. And this is pretty cool. But there is one problem for a normal user with the Apple Music API, is that you as an individual user can't really talk to this API. It's intended for developers um, making a client that that would be authorized for a user to talk to this API. So I have an Apple developer account. So I was like, okay, I'll jump through the hoops to get these things authorized. So you need to generate keys for this on the developer side, and then you need to get user authorization. So there's a couple different options on getting user authorization. The newest one is to do it through Apple's new music kit JavaScript library. Now, I'm not really a JavaScript developer, so I kind of skipped over this. The other option is to use APIs that are within um, the iOS and really interesting, now Mac Catalyst SDK. So if you use um, these functions, you can receive um, an authorization token to act upon a user's library. So that's pretty cool, but I'm also not really a Swift developer. I'm better at Google. So um, once again on GitHub, I found this example um, of how to use Music Kit on iOS. Really what this app does is authorizes and then um, lets you from an iOS app um, add items to a uh, playlist. But what I used this for was just to load it on to, um, well, put in my developer keys, load it on to um, an iPhone to get that authorization token. And then once I had that, I could write my own code using the Python, um, using the Python client to manage things within my Apple Music library. So 
let's see what a demo looks like of that. So here is some code that I've written for this demo. Um, it's using the Apple Pie Music um, client library that I talked about before, and it's pretty simple. So what we do here is load in some secrets. There's our developer token, our access token to set up an Apple Music client. Um, here's one function that I've declared that lets us search for songs. Uh, because to add a song to a playlist, you need to do that by its ID, not by its name. So you're going to need to find that within, um, within Apple Music in order to add it to your library. So what we're going to do here in this example is we've got a few different radio stations, which are all backed by radio.com, which conveniently has this uh, PHP that you can call to get JSON back of uh, up to the last thousand songs that they've played. So that's pretty cool. Um, so we're gonna pick a random one. We're gonna use requests to call that API, get all the recent events, um, and then we're going to create a playlist using our Apple Music client um, for this demo um, that will contain a random selection of songs from uh, what we got from the radio station. Um, now we're going to do that by taking a random sample, searching for the searching for the songs in that sample, adding those to a list of track IDs that we will then add to the playlist. So what does this look like when we actually run it? Here's the Python. We're going to run it right now. And we're going to see that it's searching for all these songs. It's finding them. Now, in the meantime, I'm going to open up on this iPhone over here on the side and see what the nice weather is here in Chicago. And then I'm going to open up um, this Apple Music Library. Now we can see here there's a few um, there's a few playlists that were here from before, uh, but now we see that this new playlist has just popped up, and here's all these songs that we could now listen to. Uh, now sometimes you're going to get some dupes, but maybe that's just because some radio stations play the same songs over and over and over again. Um, but so that showed up in our on iOS, and we can see over here that it's also just showed up on our um, on our Apple Music. So that's the demo. So what else is interesting here? With Apple Music API, there are some issues. Um, the search that you have is a very fuzzy search. You can get some very odd results. In this demo, we just take the first item that we get back from the result. Um, but I've definitely had the Apple Music search return Justin Bieber when I was expecting something completely different. And especially if you're managing long playlists, when you list the items back over the API from the playlist, it's like a paged API in that you get only up to 100 at a time. But it's not actually a paged API. There's no second page. You can't read the rest of the items. So if you're going to manage a long playlist, you're going to need to keep track of what you put in that playlist separately. And then if you are going to, um, if you're going to authorize this using a device like your iPhone or your Mac, you need to keep that app installed on the phone. Otherwise, the authorization token will be revoked. So I hope that. Um, I hope that was interesting. I've been playing around with this over time. It's just, it's something fun to play with. Um, and I'll have a blog post up next week at some point to, you know, kind of point through what I learned and how you could do, how you could replicate this for yourself. And that's it.